Yes, this young boy is turning 30. When I'm uploading this video, I'm probably standing on a rooftop somewhere here in Shanghai, probably Flair, looking out of the beautiful city with probably a glass of bubbles in my hand with close friends. But of course, I will always be present here for you guys because I love you for following me on this journey on my YouTube channel. So thank you very much for that. A decade, 10 years has passed since this young boy graduated high school and boy I have been through a lot. It has been a roller coaster, I can tell you that. So what I wanted to bring you today is a boiled down knowledge of 10 years into 10 small little stories for you because I have lived all over the world. I've lived in Sweden, I lived in Copenhagen, Denmark, yeah, you probably know that. I've lived in the United States, I have lived in Mexico, I've lived in Colombia, I've lived in Beijing, I've lived in Shanghai and I've traveled all over the world. I have worked at big consultancy firms, I worked for small startups, I have worked for banks, I have started my own company, I've done a lot of things throughout my life. Anyways, here we go. Here is a picture of when I graduated high school. I really, really was happy at this picture because I hated high school. Yeah, as most people do, they really feel that high school, why should we do it? You have been in school for so many years, you just doing the same and the same thing over and over again and there's no escape from it, there's no pause, so of course you will hate it. But what I decided when I lived in the United States in Wheatland, Wyoming, shout out to my host family Mickelsons, I love them. When I lived there I was very bored many times because we lived out on a farm. And it was not a lot of things happening in that city. It was fun life. We did a lot of exciting stuff sometimes, but there were also periods where I only watched TV, like that 70s show for weeks. And by that time I decided for myself, when I got back from the US, got back to Sweden, I decided for myself that I wanted the best grades possible because whatever I do in life, I know that those grades will help me benefit in the future. So I went home, got the best grades. It's not that difficult. High school is nothing compared to university. So my recommendation for you guys is, if you're finding yourself in a situation where you basically hate what you're doing, think about what you will be doing in two, three, five something years and do something now that the future one will thank you for. After high school, I wanted to move somewhere else, but I didn't have any money. So what I did was I got a job at Ikea. I'm a Swede. I got a job, but I didn't get a full-time job. I get a part-time job where the boss could call me in whenever he wanted. In order to save up money, it was kind of difficult. It takes a long time when you have a part-time job. So what I did every single morning, doesn't matter if it was Tuesday or Saturday morning, I woke up super early and I called my boss and say, do you need some extra help in any freaking way? And to my benefit, that boss was not very good at planning so he was always like oh yeah, yeah can you come in and help after lunch so I was always there after lunch help them every single day what I wanted to teach you with that small lesson is doesn't matter what type of circumstances you're in if you want something creates your reality and create something that you can benefit from by always being there always calling in learn by that after several months of working my ass off, I bought a one-way ticket to my parents' big regret to Mexico. Me encanta Mexico. Que chido este país es. Yeah, I love Mexico. I traveled to a small little place called Playa del Carmen. I was enjoying my life to the fullest. I was studying a little bit of Spanish, but most of the time I spent on Mamita's beach and just played volleyball, enjoyed the sun, enjoyed a few cocktails, like the really good life. We went to Cozumel, we traveled to Isla Mujeres and we really, really enjoyed that time. I had friends from all over the world, from especially two friends from uh, Sao Paulo in Brazil, Tiago and Talita, shout out to you. 
And during that time I met a lot of people from Mexico that lived under uh, not very good conditions. They were not super super poor, they were not living on the streets. They have very limited means to, to enjoy life, but they were always super duper happy. They always find the excuse to go party or be happy or enjoy life in one way or another, even though they had very very limited means. So what I learned from that was learn how to enjoy the small things in life. If you learn to enjoy the small things in life, you will love your life. You will enjoy your life way better instead of having expectation on, of everything that you do. After about half a year, I actually wanted to move to Colombia. When I told my mother, I can hear her voice start to uh, yeah, be a little bit nervous. I heard she cried and also my father asked me if he should take all my belongings before I go there so I won't get robbed or anything. But uh, when I got to Bogota, que es un ciudad maravilloso, I lived at a host family called Rodriguez and they were super duper nice to me. They spoke very 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 little English which was very good because I got to practice my Spanish super duper much um, and when I got there I experienced that Colombia is nothing that you hear on the news it's not about all the drugs all the war all the robbing and murdering and everything like that it's nothing like that the Colombian people are the warmest one in the world they're always always happy to bring you into uh, having dinner or just have a couple of drinks or showing you stuff they're such a lovely people so what I learned about that is skip all the prejudice you don't know about how something is until you have experienced that so all those couch philosophers as I call them though those are all wrong unless you have been there tried it out you really know what's going on China it was a very fascinating place, so I decided, okay, let's go to Beijing and see what's up there. I know it sounds crazy, I know it sounds like you're moving from one side of the world to the other side of the world and just it's skipping your home country. Yes, I understand, it sounds crazy, but I really wanted to do it, why shouldn't I do it? So I went home, got a visa, traveled to Beijing, and I remember waking up in Beijing, I didn't know anyone, I didn't know the language, I didn't know where I was, except for Beijing, of course. And I didn't know what to do. So what I did was, okay, first I have to some, have somewhere place to live. So I found someone, an um, uh, American guy that had an extra room. So I moved into his place and his yeah, girlfriend at the time. And he was like, well, there's a university down there. Do you want to study? Maybe that's a good thing. So I went down there and luckily I was like a few weeks before they actually signed up for, for start studying uh, Chinese full time. So that's what I did. I signed up. Uh, I also got a job as an English teacher which was so freaking fun if you ever come to uh, China start as an English teacher it's so much fun I would never do it again but back then oh it was so cool anyways um, so when I was there I, I learned a lot about like how to take care of myself how to push both have a work and study full-time like do all these stuff but what I also did there was that I met people from all over the world. There was people from Kazakhstan, from Korea, from Japan, from Mexico, from, I don't know, Venezuela. It was people from all over the world. And we got together in a group and I enjoyed it so freaking much that everybody, everybody in a small group were all foreigners. We we're all playing on the same terms in a foreign country and we're experiencing this together is really cool. So what I learned from that was don't judge people by what they come from, how they look, if they're short, if they're tall, if they're Asian, if they're from South America, if they're European. Never judge people by their appearance. After about half a year in Beijing, I felt that, okay, now it's time, Magnus, to get home and um, study at university. So I went home uh, to Gothenburg and um, started my business and administration uh, yeah, university degree there. And as high school, I really, really hated the university time. 
I had a really really tough start because my grandmother just got cancer when um, when I started university. I was very close to my grandmother and my my mom was even closer to my grandmother. So every time I talked to my mom I could hear how sad she was. Close up the curtain. Stay on the phone We are the monsters Holding you still How frightened she was to lose her own mother and, and to bear that and also be okay Should I be more present back home or should I, what should I do in that situation? That made me fail every single course for the first half a year at university. So after that it was the only uphill. I mean, it was so freaking difficult to have half a year of courses and then continue study on one of the toughest educations in Sweden. So what I did was like every single year, every single, I remember around this time of the year all the exams was, all the ones that have you skipped all those exams were at this time in August. But you can't eat the whole elephant in one bite. You have to chop it up in order to make it manageable. I didn't see all those tests as one tall mountain that I couldn't climb. I saw the test as small individual pieces that will fix my whole degree. So instead of focusing on on the whole scale of the project i was actually just focusing on each and every small goal which was each and every exam that i finished was one small little victory so each and every goal i thought to myself okay that was a really good job now just get on the next one and i did that over and over and over again and eventually i got my master's degree one thing i wanted to mention though regarding my grandmother she had this lovely expression where she said always put a golden edge on the situation and what she meant by that was that in every situation that she was in she always tried to elevate it a little bit make it a little bit better to enjoy life even more every time she was drinking coffee she had those small little cups with a golden edge on them every time she did the dishes she had music on and danced a little bit in order to make it more fun. Whenever there was winter, she always found that little spot where there were no wind and the sun was shining in her face to always get that tan. She always found those small things in life in order to make it a little bit more nice. Always put a golden edge on the situation. I miss her. After four years in uh, university, I got um, what I consider back then my absolutely dream job, an auditor at Deloitte. I know it sounds so unsexy, but it was the dream, the dream, the dream job I had when I studied because everybody was after those big four, KPMG, EY, PwC and Deloitte and I got in at Deloitte. I was so proud of myself. I got a job even one year before I graduated because that's how it is in that industry anyways. So I moved up to Stockholm, the big city. I was kind of afraid of it but super excited about it. So I moved into the big city. I bought my first apartment ever from all the hard work I did during my university and this was Magnus time to shine. Jesus. The first time you really get a salary, the first time you really start to like live the professional life, like having the suit, having a tie, walking with your little portfolio and having meetings. I've never had that in my life. Really told myself, this is Magnus time to really enjoy life because you have been fighting for four, four years. And what I experienced was that, yeah, it's kind of expensive to live in Sweden. Even though you get a fancy job, like working as an auditor at Deloitte, you don't have so much after, like paying rent, paying blah blah blah. But what I learned from that was 
Sometimes in life you just gonna like embrace what you have right now and squeeze the most out of it because there has been hard times and there will be hard times but when you're happy now enjoy that as much as you can don't think too much of the future. Eloyta has a lot of benefits. It's a huge company. You can do a lot of different things there. So I decided to go from from being an auditor to more like management consulting. And and so as a management consultant, I did a lot of different stuff. I worked in a forensic uh, project where we investigate uh, financial institutions. I also worked a little bit at Spotify. I worked at Wrigley's. So I did a lot of different stuff. Wherever they sent me, I just followed. And after three years at Deloitte, um, I found out that, yeah, I've basically cracked the system now. I know how things work. I know how to get the best grades. And what you should know about working at one of those huge companies is that it's simply like continuing university, but you get paid at the same time. There's so much education. You learn so freaking much. And... What I found was that, okay, there's a lot of people in here that are super duper smart. What I found out was that it's not about being the best. It's not about having like the fastest mind or do the task the best or something like that. What it is, is to crack the system. And what I found is there's certain things in that system where you can crack the system and when you find the pattern, you can benefit from that and you can be, be better than everyone else by just doing those small things. So that's what I learned instead of just doing better than everyone else. And because of that, I actually for three whole years, I got the highest bonus each and every year. And what I learned from that was there will always be smarter people than you. There will always be faster people. There will always be stronger people. There will always be people that have more benefits than you, that will always have an easier way of pursuing whatever you're trying to do. But don't focus on them. What you should focus on is how do I reach the goal faster than them? And if you can crack the system in one way or another or tweak it or bend the rules, whatever you need to do, do that in order to be the best in the ever situation that you're in. Because in the end of the day, it's the result in the end that counts more than the progress there. After a few years at Deloitte, um, my father asked me if I wanted to join a sailing trip in the Caribbean and then up to Bermuda. And who would say no to that? Jesus. I mean, what I imagined the whole trip would be was that I was laying in the front of the boat with a cocktail, enjoying the sun, maybe listening to some reggaeton music or something like that. But what I didn't know was it's pretty far between Puerto Rico and Bermuda. It's, look at the map, it's, it's freaking huge distance. So after a couple of days just traveling around in the Caribbean, we settled off from Puerto Rico and just went out. And two days into that trip, we actually hit a storm. We hit a storm that was ridiculous. It's, it's like 10 meter waves. It's just chaos, chaos, chaos. I've sailed all my life. I've sailed like since I was seven days old. Yeah, you heard me right, seven days old. And I've sailed my, with my father. I sailed in Croatia several years. But this type of sailing was completely, completely different. When you don't see anything, not a single boat, not a single island, not anything, but water and boat and the people that you're with for a week and the GPS start to yeah, break down, the autopilot crack down and some of the compasses just start to freak out. You're not that tough when you don't see land anywhere and the only thing you know is that way is Miami. It takes three days to get there. That way is Bermuda. It takes three days to get there. That way is Puerto Rico. It takes three days to get there. You're not that tough. And what I learned from that trip was you don't know how you will react in certain situations until you've been there. You don't know how you as a person will interact with a tough situation, a mental 
difficult situation or something that you're not comfortable with, that you have not tried before. So instead of judging other when they are put in that situation, try it yourself and then you will understand the difficulties a lot of people go through. We survived. I'm here. Um, the trip was awesome. That's the best experience of my life. And I got really tight with my father during that trip. So long story short, it was a good trip. But what I decided when I was out there in the middle of the night, the waves were 10 meters high and I thought I was going to die. I actually decided that I wanted to quit. I wanted to do something else in life because if I would die there, would I be satisfied with my life that I have done so far? And my, that answer was actually no when I was out there. So I decided for myself, let's go out and do some crazy things in life. So when I got home a few weeks in, I actually quit. And uh, I waited the whole summer in Sweden because Swedish summers are beautiful. If you have the opportunity to go to Sweden at any time, go during the summer, you will love it. After the summer, I packed my bags and bought a one-way ticket here to Shanghai. And then I started to vlog. Hi, hello, bonjour, hola, ni hao, internet people all over the world. Um, you probably have followed my journey a little bit uh, during these two years. And boy, it's been a roller coaster. <laughs> I didn't expect it to be like this. I was kind of naive back home. I was like, I know China. China will not change me, but yes, China has changed me. And when I got here, I wanted to start my own company, which I have. I have, still have my own company here and I've done consultancy work for different type of companies. Anyways, when I got to China, my goal was to become a YouTuber, to do like the Casey route where I documented my every day and did everything interesting but what I learned from doing that was that YouTube takes freaking long time it's not just to put up a camera and film and everything would be so freaking cool I didn't know anything about filming before I started and I learned a lot so whatever you see on YouTube you think that everything looks so nice and it's so easy just start the camera and talk uh -uh. Those creators that are big, they put so much knowledge into it. They make it look easy. That's why you think it's easy. It's not easy at all. And I have one camera there, I have one camera there. I have a big light there. I have a microphone here. I broke it. And to gain an audience is so freaking difficult. To cut through the noise that's out there. I've heard it's like 400 hours of YouTube videos are uploaded each and every minute on YouTube and you're gonna compete with it so when it comes to creating content either if it's audio or video or pictures or something like that don't judge other people unless you have tried it yourself another thing I learned about living in China is that there are no rules there are no rules here even though people think that this whole country is just rules no there is one way to do it that is wrong and then there's a thousand other ways to do it to do it right and what i learned the first people that approach you in china or try to help you are probably the worst the good ones are the ones that you will find down the road that's why if you want to enter china if you want to source things from this country if you want something from this country you need the people that have experience here you cannot just google yourself into finding something here uh-uh, that doesn't work. If you want to work with China, you have to work with local experts. So after one year there, um, I was basically headhunted for the company that I work now, Viewfin. When I get here and it's only Chinese management, I figure out that, okay, usually it's chaos in these type of companies. Usually there's no structures, you have to pave your path all the time and what you do with that is okay I could just lean back and say hey I don't want to do anything and I will get my salary or you do as I did I was super excited to do this so I created something that was basically nothing and we went out and sold things we have sold things to people all over the world and actually thriving this company that's what I'm really really excited about that even though we've been through tough times we're still up and working and that's the situation I am right now and then boom one decade later 
me, Magnus Detmer, this not so young boy anymore is turning 30. When I was 20 I thought I knew the world and by now I know that when I was 20 I didn't know a shit. I'm looking forward to be 40 because then I will probably look at myself probably in this video and say what was he thinking back then. I've learned that whatever you want to do in life it's absolutely possible, you just have to put in the work, be open-minded for changes and risk a little bit. No risk, no fun as I always say in these videos. And lastly I wanted to end up with a cliche that I always always follow. If you lay on your deathbed when you're 80, 90, 100, 110 years old, however old you are when you're on your deathbed and you look back on your life, what would you want it to be? Go and thrive for that, thrive for your daydream and you will eventually get there.